to our pastor, District Elder Haywood, and all of the saints and all that have gathered here tonight. I do greet you, each of you, in the name of Jesus, and I say to all, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are thankful that we've been re the recipient of this invitation to be part of of your service tonight and according to your program this is the sound of Pentecost revival yes, sir. we just concluded Sunday a celebration at home of Pentecost and special services last week leading up to the day of Pentecost and which is the birthday of our church yes sir and then, of course, you are following with a revival, Sound of Pentecost, after the day of Pentecost. And so I sort of got the Pentecostal fever. All right. All right. All right. And I know that you have. And so if that's the case, we, we, we ought to get along real well tonight. All right. It's important to know the birthday of your church and where your church came from, who started it, when and where. That's important. And we can say of a fact and of a truth that we sprang not from Zusa Street. All right. All right. All right. Amen. <coughs> but before Zusa Street, there was the day of Pentecost. Yes, sir. Yes. The year 33 AD in the mm -hmm. city of Jerusalem in the upper room. Amen. When the sound came Amen. as of a rushing mighty wind and it yes, filled sir. all the house where they were sitting. Yes, sir. Everybody does not wish to be identified with the Pentecostal movement. That's right. Right. That's right. Pentecost is an experience. It's not, it's not an organization. All right. It's an organism. Yes, sir. Come on, come on, come on. Praise the Lord. And so Every church that is in existence today cannot trace their history back to Pentecost. And so my statement is to them, if you're new, you're not true. Oh, no, no. Come on, Bishop. Say it. Say it. Say it. That's, that's a little tough. There are those that claim that their church began in Rome. And that church owns many of the hospitals, many of the schools, it owns property all over the world. There's not a, there's not a church organization that owns the real estate that they own all over the world. Yes, sir. Because whatever you get from that church, you got to pay for. Uh huh. Right. You want a mass, you got to pay for it. Praise the Lord. But that church started at Rome. The Lord's church didn't start in Rome. All right. Started in Jerusalem. Jerusalem. So tonight we have no argument with anybody. It's just a matter of fact. That's all. All right. And uh, they boast in the fact that, that Peter was our first pope. They, they reach over and claim Peter all right. as their pope, Pope right. Peter, the first, the first pope. Well, we don't need to argue about that. I just challenge you to do what your pope said. Yes, all right now. If he, if he was your first pope. Yes, sir. Then just obey him. All right. And you'll be all right. For he said, repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Yes, sir. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And so... We thank God for this, this Pentecost 
this Pentecostal experience, which is the power of God. And if you read in that book of Acts, which is the history of the church, if, if, if you want to know the history of the church, you don't read Matthew, you don't read Mark, you don't read Luke, you don't read John. Uh -huh. But if you want to know the history of the church, you don't read Romans. All right, Bishop. You don't read First Corinthians. You don't read Second Corinthians. All right. You have to go to the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. This is the historical book of the New Testament, and it is there that you find where the church started, who its first converts were. Yes, sir. And when you read that second chapter of that book and the last verse, it says these words, or well, almost the last verse, the end of the chapter, it says, and the Lord added to the church. Yes, sir. Such as should be saved. So that church that was started there on Pentecost is the only church God has. All right. Ain't no other. Ain't no other. But this one. Yes, on one church. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. And and so today I trust that Pentecost will be real in your life and that you will come to know the true meaning of it and what it is about and what it's for. Our doctrine is the doctrine of the apostles. All right. So we in doctrine are apostolic and we in experience are Pentecostal. Yes, sir. Let me tell you something, and I don't want to offend nobody. God didn't start the Baptist church. Uh -huh. Come on, come on, come on. Now, let's be real. The Presbyterian church is a rich church. I had a dear friend of mine that was a Presbyterian minister in Cincinnati, and he since moved on, but he came to me and he said to me, you're in the wrong church. And I says, oh, you think so? And he says, yes. And my church was about five times as large as his. And he only had about one service a week and it was dead and dry. Mm. So he said, the Presbyterian church is one of the richest Protestant churches there is. Yes. He said they got money. He yes. said we don't have to worry about evangelizing or doing person to person work, yeah, ringing folks' doorbell. He said I preach my sermon on Sunday and take care of my prayer meeting, visit the sick, and my check comes every week in the mail. And I said, well, if that's what you after. Yes, sir. Right. Uh, <laughs> uh, but honey, if you get this thing right, All right. it's something about it. Yes, sir. Praise yes, the sir. Lord. Yes, sir. So God bless you, and I trust that Pentecost will come alive, and that you will come to know what it means and become a recipient of it. All right. And um, enjoy the Lord and enjoy this Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is real. Yes, sir. And that's what I'm going to preach about tonight. Right. Is that all right? Yes, sir. Amen. All right. So in the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 1, we're going to read the verse 5 and 6. And thank God I got two nights, so I don't have to just hurt myself tonight. I can just sort of warm up a little bit. <laughs> hey, man. Drove all the way up here today. and uh, But it's all right. First chapter of the first epistle to the Thessalonians, 
verse number five and six. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit. And in much assurance, mm -hmm. as ye know what manner of men we were among you yes. for your sake. And ye became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with joy of the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. In that sixth verse, and maybe I should read it real quick again. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, much affliction. with joy mm -hmm. of the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. I want to talk about having received the word in much affliction mm. with joy in the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. And of course, the Apostle Paul, as he speaks to the saints at Thessalonica, which is a church that he was the father of, and the saints in Thessalonians, as he writes this letter to them, the theme of the letter that Paul is going to talk about really has to do with the fact that Jesus is coming back again. And he is attempting to encourage them, encourage the saints, to let them know that the Lord is coming back to catch away his own, that we are to walk in his will and in his way. But by mentioning the fact that he was the minister that preached to them. He brought them the message, the word, and they received the word that he brought to them. All right. But he said, you received it, the word, in much affliction. Much affliction. But thank God he didn't end his message and the verse did not end at that point. All right. Because if it was nothing but affliction, All right. I'm certain that many of us, in fact, most of us, All right. would probably not be here tonight. All right. All right. If all there was in this life was affliction, and affliction and affliction. All right. As you received the word and as you embraced the word and as you believed the word, if there was just nothing in it but tears and grief All right. and sorrow, I have no doubt that many of us would not be sitting here in this church All right. tonight. I would say that I would serve the Lord if there was no heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This may be true, but somehow I seem to doubt it. Yes. If there was no promise of a better life, a better place, a better day. I'm sure that many of us would not tolerate 
the things we do. Yes, sir. Amen. The reason we tolerate these things is because that there is a promise in God's word of a place that's better than this. Not only that, but when we receive the word with much affliction, God gave us something else. Right. And he gave us something that we received when we obeyed the word. When we accepted the gospel message and when we accepted the preaching of the word of God, we accepted that word and we acted upon it. Consequently, there's much affliction, there's much pressure, there's much opposition that comes our way because we have accepted the word. Yes, sir. Yeah. But I'm here to tell you tonight that we've got something else that's making us tick. Mm. And that is, we have received the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. All right. All right. And when we received that, it was not only power. Jesus, if you remember when he was leaving the earth, he led the disciples out as far as Mount Bethany. He lifted up his hands, and you all have read this mm -hmm. in the first chapter of that book again, the book of Acts. He lifted up his hands and blessed them gave to them his final farewell message and his words to them was you shall receive power yes, sir. after that the Holy Ghost yes. is come upon you yes. Yes. thank God for that power tonight yes, the word power really refers to dynamite. Mm -hmm. You shall receive dynamite yes. after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. All right. Well, you see, saints, we were in the clutches of hell, in the clutches of Satan, and this is why that Many people today are mistaken mm -hmm. about their salvation. All right, come on. I'm here to serve notice on you tonight that if you're going to serve God, you've got to have some power. All right. You must have some power. And that power, which is the Holy Ghost, yes, sir. produces fruit in your life. Yes, it does. Amen. Amen. And one of those fruits that it produces is joy. Oh, yeah. Yes, and so it is the joy of the Holy Ghost mm. that helps us tolerate the affliction mm. we receive All right. All right. in serving God. And so tonight, no man, no woman can effectively serve the Lord as you should without the Holy Ghost. Without the Holy Ghost. It takes the Holy Ghost to help you withstand the fiery darts of the adversary. All right. This is why my heart goes out to folks who only know God because they have prayed the sinner's prayer. All 
Right. Come on, come on. Come on. That's all they know about God. That's all the religion, so to speak, that they have received. Mm -hmm. I heard uh, Mr. Mr. Couch or Crouch on TBN make a statement just a few days ago when he was soliciting funds for his station. He said, since we've been on the air and we have established these stations all over the world. He says eight million people have gotten saved All right. because they called one of our stations and prayed the sinner's prayer. All right, Bishop. Garbage. Mm -hmm. Talk, Bishop. That's what I call that. All right. Hogwash is he probably better word. If the only thing you know about God All right. is the fact that you've prayed a sinner's prayer, then I'm here to tell you you don't know very much. Very much. All right. All right, Bishop. And you didn't even pray that prayer. <laughs> Somebody else was praying it for you. Come on, come on. And you was repeating the prayer. All right. Come on. Sometimes folks sit around the television and that program you're looking at could be a month old. All right, Bishop. Amen. And you are there praying the sinner's prayer. Praying the sinner's prayer. But I want you to know there's more to salvation. Yes, sir, Bishop. There is a power that's called the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. And not only that, but Amen. Many, many, many people are mistaken when they quote that scripture from Romans. Confess with your mouth and Go ahead, Bishop. believe in your heart, yes. etc. So you'll be saved. And what they don't fail to remember is that that scripture in Romans is written to people who are already saved. Yes. Amen, somebody. Amen. That scripture is not talking about how to get saved. All right. It's talking about how to be saved. Yes, sir. But you cannot get saved until you are saved. Yes, sir. So you got to do a little better than that. All right. Come on, come on. You see, because the Bible sets forth one plan of salvation for everybody. Everybody. And you do not, you do not have the right, and I feel sorry. I wouldn't be in the shoes of a preacher that would preach a sermon and give a beautiful exegesis All right. of his mastery of, of, of words and knowledge of the Bible and then come down to opening the doors of the church and then repeat the sinner's prayer. I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. Come on. Yes. Come on. All right, Bishop. There's only one way to be saved. All right. That is by repenting of your sins. Yes. Being baptized in water in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. For the remission of those sins. Yes. And then God filling you with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. This is what Pentecost is all about. Yes. Praise the Lord. And this, this is what it means. Thank God. And so I know there are some who become concerned because your church is not bursting out at the seams, mm -hmm. that they're not buses and vans parked around your door. But I'm here to tell you that heaven is not competing with hell over numbers. Amen. Heaven, heaven in no way is out trying to outnumber hell. Because if that's the case, hell has already been declared the winner. Because the way the destruction is broad, thank God it's crowded. There are a lot of church members on that highway. Thank God, but the way that, that leads to life, everlasting. It's a straight way, it's, it's a narrow way. And few there be that find it. Can I get an amen here tonight? 
Praise the Lord. We might as well get this thing right tonight. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. You've got to have joy. You, you, you cannot get through this life without something to take you through. Thank God and so the Apostle Paul, he's talking to the saints here at Thessalonica. And he says to them, you knew what I used to be. Yes. Thank God you knew the lifestyle that, that I used to have. He said, you knew me. You, you knew about me. Because he said, I, I thought I was, I, I thought I was, 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 was saved. Praise the Lord. He, he thought he was saved. Yeah. Like many folks today, they boast in the fact that I am a Christian. Oh, yeah. Amen. I am a Christian. Yes. But I'm here to tell you, if you read the Bible, you'll find out who Christians are. All right. All right. Amen. Because they call these Holy Ghost folks yes. oh, yeah. Christians. Oh, yeah. These folks that had been to Pentecost. Oh, yeah had received the Holy Ghost. Those were the ones in the Bible they call Christians. The early apostles, the saints, were the ones that were called Christians. Not these card-toting church members. Amen. Everybody is a born-again Christian. I had a lady called to come to see me no longer than last night. and She wanted me to be convinced that she had the Holy Ghost and she was talking about being in a in a grocery store and said I wanted to to get this but somehow when I started to say this I couldn't say it and she said I began to say something else she says I don't know what that something else was she said but I believe it must have been the Holy Ghost mm -hmm. not so friend All right. but when the Holy Ghost comes it speaks for itself Amen. Amen. You, you, don't, you don't concentrate on speaking in tongues. Uh -huh. you, you concentrate on receiving the Holy Ghost. Thank God. And when it comes, uh. it'll speak for itself. Yeah. You don't need to learn to speak in tongues. You don't need to rehearse it. Nobody needs to train you. You just receive the Holy Ghost. Thank God when he comes, the Holy Ghost that is, when he takes up his uh, abode in your heart, he'll speak for himself and let you know, I'm on board now. Let the church say amen today. Amen. And so it is, dear saints of God, the Holy Ghost is a real experience. It is not the figment of our imagination. The same Holy Ghost we receive today is the same Holy Ghost they received in the days of the apostles. Yes. Thank God because the Bible said, don't you remember when Nicodemus came to the Lord yeah. and he asked him, he said, Lord, what must I do to be saved? How can I inherit eternal life? Yeah. Jesus said to him, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit. Yes. He cannot enter into the kingdom of the almighty. Not only can he not enter into it, but he, he can't even see it. Yes. Unless you're born of the water and born of the spirit. Thank God this is true then and it is true now. And so Jesus gave Nicodemus a clue. When he said to him, Lord, how can I be born again? Do you mean I've got to go back into my mother's womb a second time and be born again? You see, folks are trying to figure this out. Scott is trying to figure it out. But I want you to know, amen, God's way is above the ways of man. And you'll never be able to figure it out. You'll never be able to understand that that's where faith comes in. Amen. You've got to believe. If, amen. You've got to believe what God's word said. Whether you understand it, whether you can explain it or not, that doesn't matter. If God said it, you've got to believe it and put your confidence in it here today. 
Let the church say amen. amen. Oh, yes, and so Nicodemus wanted to know from the Lord. He wanted to know, Lord, how can I be born again? What do I do? How can this be? Jesus said to him, that which is born of flesh is flesh, yes. but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. In other words, Nicodemus, it would do you no good to go back into your mother's womb. Amen. That's born of the flesh. But what you need is to be born of the spirit. You need a new birth. Thank God you need a new spirit. You need to be regenerated. And then Jesus gave him a clue when he said, The wind will blow where it listeth. You hear the sound thereof. In other words, Nicodemus, if you don't understand what I'm talking about, listen for the wind. The wind's going to blow. Then you'll know what I'm talking about. Thank God. And I don't know whether Nicodemus kept his ears open or not. But one thing I do know, amen, in the year of 33 A.D., in the city of Jerusalem, in the upper room, suddenly a sound came. Thank God, as of a rushing mighty wind. Oh, yes, oh, yes. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. And it, 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 it came upon them cloven tongues like as a fire. And the Bible said they all were filled with the Holy Ghost. Peter received it. Mary, the mother of Jesus, received it. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Thomas, Bartholomew, James, they all received the power of the Holy Ghost today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank God, and I dare you to try to minimize this experience. I dare you to try to explain it away. The Holy Ghost is real. It's a real, genuine experience. And you, without the Holy Ghost, you'll never survive in this world. Without the power of God in your soul. And don't you know when they receive the Holy Ghost, the folks heard to make the sound. There's some folk that want to believe in it, but they want to get it cute. They want to get it quiet. They want to get it sophisticated. They want to get it easy. Easy. But I just come to tell you, thank God when that 120 people, amen, received the Holy Ghost, they alarmed that city. The sound went out. The noise went out. <coughs> when the sound came from heaven, the noise went out from them when they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. And let me tell you tonight, if you get the real Holy Ghost, you'll never be the same. If you receive this real power, you'll never be the same. The things you used to do, you won't do no more. The places you used to go, you won't go no more. And aren't you glad you've received the power of the Holy Ghost? It brought joy unspeakable and full of glory. Oh, oh. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm going to calm down here. I don't mean to get this excited tonight. Thank God, but when you when you when you talk about the Holy Ghost, Amen. You just can't. I don't understand, folk, that claim to have it and never show no enthusiasm. I don't understand people that claim they're born again and don't show no signs of it. Amen. Still drink, still curse, still lie, still steal, and let you got the Holy Ghost. Listen, the Holy Ghost. It real changes you, it picks you up, it turns you around, it starts you in a new direction, you have a new mind, a new soul, you run with a new crowd, you dance to a new tune, you sing a new song, you have a new level when you get the Holy Ghost. 
Amen. Oh, yes. Amen. Hold it on the drum, son. Thank you. Hallelujah to God. Let, and let me say this to you also. Uh, thank God that when the Holy Ghost came, uh, blessed be God. And when they began to rejoice and the noise went out and they began to speak with tongues, uh, the folks gathered around them uh, and they said, these men must be drunk. Uh, look at the way they're acting. Uh, but Peter stood up among them uh, and said, oh, hold it. Uh, we are not drunk, not like you think, uh, but this is that uh, spoken of uh, by the prophet Joel uh, when God spoke through the prophet uh, and said, in the last days, uh, I'll pour out of my spirit uh, among all flesh, uh, among your sons and your daughters. Uh, and Peter said, this is that uh, that was spoken of um, by the prophet Joel. Uh, let me tell you, saints, tonight, uh, amen, we, when we get the Holy Ghost, uh, I have a man, a brother in my church, uh, amen, that when he came around the saints, uh, he said, the thing that amazed me, uh, he said, I didn't see no drinking. Uh, he said, I didn't see no party going on, uh, but I'm here to tell you, uh, oh yes, there is a party uh, uh, that's going on. Uh, we can party hearty, uh, and we can hearty party. Uh, Hallelujah to God. Ever since God filled me, I've been having a party. I've been drinking from the fountain that never runs dry. You don't need to stop drinking. Just change your brand. You don't need to stop dancing. Just change your partner. There is a party going on. And I'm glad for this power. I've got joy in the Holy Ghost. I know it gets rough. I know it gets tired. I know Satan gets angry. He's been on your trail. He's trying to stop you. But I'm here to tell you, it's joy. Helps me put up with everything that I encounter. It's the joy of the Holy Ghost that helps me overcome. It's the joy of the Holy Ghost that helps me endure hardness as a good soldier is the joy of the Holy Ghost. I'm just like Jesus who the Bible said concerning him who for the joy that was set before him he endured the cross despising the shame he went through Pilate's hall he saw joy just on the other side. Well I'm here to tell you that every now and then a God gives me a touch every now and then. He gives me a boost every now and then. I feel a chill. I feel a sensation. And I'm here to tell you, don't go too long without feeling something. I... Glory to God. Don't stay around here uh, too long. Don't get too dry. Don't get too dead. Keep the fire. Keep it burning. Keep the joy flowing in your life. For Satan can't handle a happy saint of God. Hell can't handle a happy saint of God. I've got joy unspeakable and full of glory. Joy in the morning. Joy at noonday. Joy in the midnight hour. Joy on the sick bed. That helps me move on. I've got joy. I've got some clapping in my hand. I've got some stomping in my feet. And so, child of God, lift up your head. Act like you're somebody. Lift your head high. Put some step pep in your step. I'm a child of the king. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. 
I may not be what I ought to be, but thank God, I ain't what I used to be. I used to be a drunkard, but thank God, there's been a great change since I've been born. And when I look back and see where he brought me, hell had to let me go. Hell had to loose me. The devil had to free me. And thank God, I'm free at last. Free at last. joy of the Holy Ghost. Is there any joy? We're not over here being driven and being pulled and coached and begged to serve the Lord. But I'm glad to be here. I'm not here wishing I was somewhere else. I'm glad to be here. I'm not chained in here. I'm not locked up in here. I'm here because I want to be here. In the church, yes, of the Almighty God, the joy, glory to God, that's in the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord. Amen. And whatever comes down the way, your joy will help you overcome it. I don't care what you've been through today. You, you got joy, and you don't know what the devil tried to do to you today. He's tried to kill you today. But God has beat him off of you. You don't know how many demons been attacking you today. But God said, this is my child. Leave him alone. Sickness may have claimed you today. Cancer may have knocked on your door. But God said, not here today. Go downtown. This is my child. Clap your hands and say hallelujah. Uh, joy. I'm going to stop. I'll be back tomorrow night. Ooh, but I feel good tonight. Are you ashamed of the Holy Ghost? Are you ashamed of the Holy Ghost? Do you really have it? Did you speak in tongues? Stand up on your feet. Go shake somebody's hand and say, I've got the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth. Say it loud. Hallelujah. I've got the Holy Ghost. Hey. Don't be ashamed of it. I got 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 it. Hallelujah. I got it. The power of the Holy Ghost. Thank God. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're a Holy Ghost church. We are saved. We are sanctified. Holy Ghost filled, power baptized. That's what makes us tick. It's not our money. It's not our good looks. It's not our education. But it's what we got on the inside. Power that produces strength. Amen. It's all in the name of Jesus. The world don't like that name of Jesus. But every knee you're going to have to bow before him. And every tongue is going to have to confess. Thank God that he's Lord. Lord, I thank you for zapping me with the Holy Ghost. And when I got it, amen, I, it, kept, it did not turn me loose in five minutes. I don't understand this Holy Ghost somebody, some of you are getting. And in five minutes, you're back by the pop machine drinking a Coca-Cola. I was still under the influence. Hey, man, all night long, the Holy Ghost was moving. And you know what? It's still moving. Woo! The almighty joy that's in the Holy Ghost. If you're here tonight without it, we're going to give you an opportunity to come. Oh, glory. You know, God, he didn't need, he didn't, I didn't deserve what God did for me. All right, all right. Amen. Yeah. But I'm glad he did it. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So glad I found it out. Yeah. Tell me when Frank Sinatra was dying, he said he can 
said something ought to be somewhere in the world that I can take to keep me alive. He said, regardless of how much it costs, it doesn't matter. Hey, Amen. There ought to be something that can keep me alive. Well, I wish I could have been there. I would have told him about something that money can buy. That money can't buy, and I got it tonight. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I got it tonight. Thank God. I wish I could have been there and told you. There's a power you can get that'll go with you through the valley of the shadow of death and bring you up on the other side with a shout of victory. You need power. Hey, Amen. If you die in weakness, you have no strength.